So I'm, we're looking at this book, Mastery, The Keys to Success and Long-Term Fulfillment by George Leonard. Uh, let me give you a summary of the book. Okay. The definition of mastery is the mysterious process during which what is at first difficult becomes progressively easier and more pleasurable through practice. If there's any sure route of, to success and fulfillment in life, it is to be found in the long-term, essential, goalless process of mastery. To practice for the sake of the practice itself, not for the result. All significant learning is composed of brief spurts of progress followed by long periods of work where it feels as if you're going nowhere. It's what they call a plateau. There are no experts, only learners. Okay, good morning, HT. Sharon, Bethany, Jeff. Today is part three of my sharing from the book Mastery. In his book Mastery, George Leonard writes that we all aspire to mastery, but the path is always long and sometimes rocky, and it promises no quick and easy payoffs. If we look for other paths, so we look for other paths, each of which attracts a certain type of person. These other paths that George Leonard is talking about come in the form of three different personalities, the dabbler, the obsessive, and the hacker. Let's look at each of them. Dabblers love the high that comes from doing something new, new jobs, new hobbies, new relationships, etc. They'll approach each new spot, career, or relationship with tons of enthusiasm. Jeff Watts, says the dabbler is the adventurer, the connoisseur of novelty, the eternal five-year-old kid. In relationships, they specialize in honeymoons. Dabblers love learning new sports. They sign up for tennis lessons. They buy the freshest gear, the coolest tennis racket, and they are elated when they learn how to hit a pedal, a tennis ball. <coughs> tennis ball, I'm thinking about pedal boarding, buying a pedal board. But when the progress slows and they realize it'll take time to perfect their stroke, they decide that they decide that maybe it's better to try a, a different sport. The moment a dabbler hits a real plateau, especially if it causes them to lose some of the progress that they initially made, they quit. Dabblers specialize in excuses and rationalizations. This new job, sport, or relationship just isn't for them. They don't stick to things. Dabblers get extremely frustrated when they aren't constantly improving. So they will give up on a skill very quickly. They then move on to a new one where the same pattern persists. The dabbler has a long resume. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the second personality type, the obsessive. This is the bottom line type of person. He's type A, okay, the driven person. All the obsessive cares about is results, 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 and fast. He wants to get it right in the first lesson itself. He stays up after classes to ask his teachers about the secrets of the craft. He devours books and tapes to learn how to make progress faster. When they hit plateaus, they are just as appalled as the dabbler. They can't handle the plateau. But rather than quitting, the obsessive doubles down. Okay, they double down. They push and push and push themselves to create a continued upward curve. But they push themselves too hard. And in so doing, they run out of gas, burn out. People urge them for moderation, but they ignore these urges for moderation. They keep making small spurts of progress followed by sharp declines. So what do they do? They look for shortcuts. The obsessive becomes so obsessed with results that they don't even realize they're undermining themselves in the long run with these types of shortcuts. If you never properly learn to juggle three balls, you'll inevitably drop everything when you try to juggle four. But the obsessive refuses to understand this. 
they reject that mastery is cumulative, that it requires a solid foundation. And that foundation, of course, is established on the plateau. I want to share with you about what David B. Glover, he's a triathlete and martial artist. He writes in his blog, I hit my ceiling on performance in 2007 as I set personal best times in both Ironman triathlon and marathon, earned an elite professional triathlon license and won the Vineman full triathlon overall. Once I achieved these personal best times, I simply set the bar higher. In early 2008, while training for a marathon, I crashed and burned with overtraining, burnout, injury, and adrenal fatigue. Yet even after all that, I could not accept the plateau. In this case, it was a trough and still thought I could continue to get faster. But I never could after 2007. I also no longer felt any sense of accomplishment from finishing races and I lost my desire to compete, so I stopped. That was David uh, Glover, an extreme triathlete. But few of us are extreme triathletes. We have more in common with Jack. Having battled with obesity for years, Jack finally decides to lose weight. He enrolls in a nearby gym and is consistent with his workouts. In a month, Jack has lost three kilos and he's excited to step on the weighing scale every day. However, as the weeks go by, Jack's body gets used to the change in exercise and diet, and his results start to stagnate. Bothered by this, Jack starts re re researching faster ways to lose fat and finds a bunch of unhealthy fat diets on the internet to try out. Over the coming few weeks, Jack loses a lot of fat. However, due to the lack of proper nutrition, he becomes a total mess. His sleep is ruined. He has no energy to do any work. He's a total train wreck. As his willpower gets exhausted, Jack starts binge eating again and quits his fat loss journey altogether. Jack is an obsessive. And those of you who, and many of us are experts at the tr weight management program, we understand the importance of uh, going through that plateau. The third personality is the hacker. Now he's a bit different. Okay, The hacker differs from the dabbler and obsessive because he's quite willing to stay on a plateau indefinitely. Okay, This guy, the hacker, wants, he's happy to stay on the plateau. Hackers begin reasonably well and make decent progress. But at a certain point, they stop caring. Once they've learned enough to feel comfortable with their situation, they stop trying to improve. A hacker, unlike a dabbler or an obsessive, is not that bothered by the plateau. After reaching a certain level, he just doesn't bother to take the efforts to climb to another. For instance, a tennis player who develops a strong forehand and convincing, convinces himself that he can make do with a decent backhand, so he doesn't bother to work on his backhand. Okay? So you, you can see this is the professional, the lawyer, the engineer, the doctor who doesn't do continuing education to improve his skills. The hacker does just enough to get results and coasts on previous success. So they never do what it takes to attain mastery. So let me summarize in a nutshell these three people. Okay, The dabbler starts something new, experiences the highs that come with quick results, hits a plateau, and creates an excuse to quit and move on to the next thing. The obsessive experiences an upward curve, hits a plateau, gets impatient, tries to push past it and move on to the next level, and then runs out of gas and experiences a sharp downward decline, especially when they look for shortcuts. The hacker just hacks away at things. He's content with some competence without working to improve his skills and grow beyond the basics. So that's uh, what George Standard shares about these three personalities. Now, what I'm going to share uh, next is not from George Leonard, but from my practice of on reflecting on strengths and seeing the cup as half full. So what's the positive thing about 
being a dabbler. Well, it means you're open to new ideas, open to new possibilities, especially when you know, I believe that you don't know what you don't know. So just waiting to try. It's like what I say, go as far as you can see. When you get there, you'll see further and you can decide to stop. My bookshelf is full of self-development books. I read about half of them and have the other half queued up to read. I love the newness of new ideas and I may try a few of the suggested exercises or practices, but I can get bored with one set of ideas or forget about them. And then it's on to the next book. But I think this is not a bad thing. It's like sifting and sorting. Okay. Now, what's the positive thing about the obsessive? He's got discipline. Okay. This chap's got discipline. He's got drive. And having him around will help his teammates jumpstart new things to create forward momentum when inertia is greatest uh, at the start when it's a new idea. Okay. So remember, one bookend to success is starting and the obsessive will will get you started because he's bang, 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 go. Okay. What's the positive thing about the hacker? They are great conversationalists, great connectors because they live a really rich, varied and interesting life. Sometimes it's really boring talking to an expert. All they talk about is, let's say, running, running, running. Okay. And in our business of networking, it's good to have many points of connections and if we've got many interests, it's, it's very good. In this series, we're talking about mastery. Okay, so beware of the weaknesses in each of these three personalities that you need to work on in your path to mastery, which is primarily about managing this thing called the plateau, which is actually the time when you consolidate and, and attain mastery. Okay, so next week, we will look at the keys to mastery. George Lander talks about five keys. We will look at the first key to mastery next week.